Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will see some applications of wild character formula. First, we will begin with the coast on uh, multiplicity formula. Uh, for that purpose, uh, first we need to define what is called coast on partition function. So, let us uh, let us fix some notations. Uh, so, recall uh, what is this uh, cone q plus. So, this q plus is nothing but z plus span of all simple roots alpha 1 etcetera alpha n. So, this is also same as z plus span of the positive roots delta plus. So, let us fix this notation delta plus is equal to beta 1 etcetera beta n where n is the number of positive roots. So, now given this uh, what one can do one can define uh, this function called coastant partition function coastant partition function. So, which is defined to be let us call it p of mu for mu in q. Okay. So, this is defined to be the the following number again the number of tuples r 1 etcetera r n number of tuples r 1 etcetera r n such that this mu is written as r 1 beta 1 plus etcetera r n beta n. So, of course, these tuples comes from e z plus power n and this makes sense only if mu is in the in the this cone q plus or otherwise we define it to be 0. So, it is defined to be 0 if mu is in q plus we define it to be this number of tuples r 1 etcetera r n such that mu is equal to r 1 beta 1 plus etcetera r n beta n otherwise we just define it to be 0. Note that so, what it actually counts the p of mu in a more plain language this actually counts the number of ways we can express mu as sum of positive roots. So, basically for mu in q, so the p of mu counts the number of ways we can express mu as a sum of positive roots. And of course, by this definition when mu is not in q plus p of mu becomes 0. So, now uh, it is an elementary exercise that if you take the Verma module for any given lambda in h star. So, the multiplicity of the mu weight space that is the dimension is given by the partition function on lambda minus mu. Okay. And this is true for any lambda in h star and mu in h star. So, I will leave it as exercise because this is just a comes from the definition. So, now let us state uh, the multiplicity formula. So, here is the coast on multiplicity formula. So, let us call it theorem. So, this is due to coast on. So, let uh, lambda coming from the dominant weight lattice sorry set of dominant weights lambda plus and mu coming from the weight lattice. So, then what we are interested in we are interested in the multiplicity of mu in V of lambda. So, that means the number m mu lambda. So, which is by definition the dimension of V of lambda mu and this is given very explicitly by the following formula. You take sum over sigma in W such that the sin of sigma times the partition function of W lambda plus rho minus mu plus rho. So, this is very explicit closed formula for the multiplicity and of course, in, in practice this will be very difficult to compute. So, you can see that this partition function is only 
non trivial whenever this w lambda plus rho is bigger than mu plus rho in the dominance order otherwise this difference will not lie in q plus so then this you can just assume to be zero but in practice uh, you can actually see that uh, the while group indeed grows very big okay so for example if you take type e8 it has some 62000 plus elements so so using this uh, formula coaster formula it will be very difficult to compute the multiplicity and another drawback about this formula this formula is alternating formula so the sign actually changes here okay so whenever you see some formula that has this alternating signs so that is very bad formula in terms of combinatorics okay so let's see how to prove this this is indeed uh, immediate uh, application of uh, while character formula so let's set up the notation and then just rewrite the while character formula then we will get this so here is the proof so start with chi lambda so that is by definition summation m lambda mu e power mu where mu comes from capital lambda so this is all just formal computations note that s rho inverse is nothing but e power minus rho 1 divided by product 1 minus e power minus alpha alpha in delta plus and recall 1 divided by 1 minus e power minus alpha is given by summation e power minus i alpha i range from 0 to infinity. So now if you take the products among all of them then it is easy to see that you are just taking the product here. So 1 divided by product 1 minus e power minus alpha alpha in delta plus is nothing but the product summation e power minus i alpha i range from 0 to infinity where alpha runs over delta plus. So that means so this is going to be exactly equal to if I fix some minus gamma then this is going to be p of gamma where gamma runs over q plus. So if you think about it we are taking the product among all this summation. So if you fix gamma then you want to write that gamma in terms of this uh, sum of positive roots and the number of ways you write uh, that will be the coefficient of this uh, uh, this e power minus gamma in this product. So in particularly uh, if we use this uh, explicit uh, expression of the inverse of s rho in the character formula then the character formula says chi lambda is given by s lambda plus rho divided by s rho. So that means this is exactly equal to uh, summation sin of sigma e power w lambda plus rho and sorry mixing signs. So it should be sigma here. So sigma in w then that sigma should appear here. So then uh, you can see that uh, this summation uh, sigma in w e power sigma w lambda plus rho that is going to be exactly s lambda plus rho. So this times so you want to have this uh, s rho inverse which is given by e power minus rho times this 1 divided by product 1 minus e power minus alpha. So which gives you exactly that summation p of gamma e power minus gamma plus rho where gamma runs over q plus. So now you can make this gamma to run over q there is no issue then if you rewrite this on the ones on the left hand side you have the multiplicity of mu in lambda uh, e power mu mu in capital lambda is equal to summation so you can just uh, run over gamma and then see what happens. So this is exactly equal to sin sigma. So let us run over gamma summation sigma in w e power sigma 
lambda plus rho minus gamma plus rho. So, this is oh sorry the multiplicity uh, sorry the p of gamma should be here. So, now uh, if mu is equal to the sigma lambda plus rho minus gamma plus rho. So, then you can easily see that from this expression this gamma is exactly is going to be sigma lambda plus rho minus mu plus rho. So, if you substitute it back, so you can see that the right hand side becomes summation gamma summation sigma in w sin sigma p of sigma lambda plus rho minus mu plus rho times e power mu comes. So, this is going to be our coefficient of e power mu on the right side. So, we are changing the variable uh, mu to like gamma to sigma. So, we are changing the variable gamma to mu. If you do this change of variable, then we are rewriting all these things. So, then this is exactly equal to summation mu in lambda, the multiplicity of mu in v lambda e power mu. So, this implies that the multiplicity mu in v lambda is given by summation sigma in w sin sigma p of sigma lambda plus rho minus mu plus rho. So, this is a very explicit and uh, straightforward application of wild character formula. So, now uh, even though like this is very explicit closed formula, okay, the practical difficulties are this while group is indeed large and this function is somewhat very hard to compute because this demands lots of information. Okay. So, now let us actually move forward and then uh, I will prove now Steinberg's formula. So, that is again some immediate uh, application of this wild character formula. So, recall what is the Steinberg's formula. So, this actually gives the number of uh, v lambda that occurs inside uh, tensor product v lambda 1 tensor v lambda 2. So, it gives uh, the very explicit formula for that uh, multiplicity. So, the Steinberg's formula, so let us actually write it down. So, this is given by, so given lambda 1, lambda 2 in dominant and lambda again dominant. So, we are interested in the number of times V of lambda occurs inside V lambda 1 tensor V lambda 2. So, this is actually we want to count what is this number. So, this number is given very explicitly by this double sum to sum over sigma and then sum over tau and then you take sin of sigma tau times the constant partition function applied on these elements sigma lambda 1 plus rho plus tau lambda plus 2 rho minus lambda plus 2 rho. So, again same practical difficulties are there in uh, using this Steinberg's formula the while group will be very large and uh, this is indeed alternating sum and computing this constant partition function is also very hard actually. So, let us prove this. Uh, so, this is just uh, obtained again by using this uh, wild character formula and rewriting things in uh, some clever ways. Okay. So, here is the proof. So, let us go through the proof. Just write chi lambda 1 times chi lambda 2 to be uh, summation n of lambda chi lambda where lambda runs over lambda plus. Okay. So, just write uh, like this. So, now we are interested in computing n of lambda in terms of uh, the while group. So, now what we will do first we will multiply. So, we multiply by 
yes row on both sides. So, then we get the following. So, you keep for example, the second term and then uh, you just uh, change the things. Okay. So, we keep just uh, second term. So, in particularly chi lambda 1 is given by summation the multiplicity mu in lambda 1 e power mu mu in capital lambda. So, we are going to just uh, uh, use this formula for the first term. The second term by multiplying by s rho it becomes s lambda 2 plus rho. So, this becomes chi lambda 1 s lambda 2 plus rho is equal to summation n of lambda s lambda plus rho where lambda runs over lambda plus. So, in this we are going to use this explicit expression of chi lambda 1 and then rewrite things. So, now we also use this constant formula for the multiplicity. So, if you use that uh, what will happen to the left hand side? So, let us work out the left hand side. So, the left hand side becomes using this uh, constant part partition sorry constant formula. So, constant formulas for the multiplicity. So, we write chi lambda 1 as this summation uh, m u lambda 1 e power mu and then replace this m u lambda 1 using the constant formula. So, if we do that then what we get on the left side left hand side is exactly equal to summation mu in lambda summation sigma in w sin of sigma the partition function p of sigma lambda 1 plus rho minus mu plus rho. So, this is what is there in the constant formula times you get this e power mu because this is exactly the. So, this part is what the multiplicity. So, then times e power mu you get and then we will keep that s lambda 2 plus rho as it is. So, now uh, we can again use the definition of s lambda 2 plus rho. So, that is given by summation the sin of tau, tau runs over w e power tau lambda 2 plus rho. So, if we just use this, so then we get the above formula. So, the left hand side becomes again summation mu in lambda summation sigma in w. Now, there will be another sum over tau in w because that is coming from this s lambda 2 plus rho. So, then we keep the constant partition function as it is. This sin tau times sin sigma because sin is being group homomorphism, this becomes sin of sigma tau. Then times this partition function sigma lambda 1 plus rho minus mu plus rho will stay as it is and then times e power mu plus tau of lambda plus 2 rho will, will be there. So, this is what there on the left hand side. So, now uh, we can actually simplify uh, this left hand side by substituting the variables. Okay. So, we want to replace this variable by let us say some mu dash. So, let us replace that by mu. Okay. So, then it just uh, changes as follows. So, what we are going to do? We are going to actually, so maybe like I will just write it as gamma plus rho, no issue. So, what we will do? We just write, so this is the change of variable that we are doing mu plus tau lambda 2 plus rho. So, this you write it as gamma plus rho. So, then it is clear that uh, what will be this minus mu plus rho because that is what appearing here. So, this also should be rewritten. So, then you can easily see that minus mu plus rho is exactly 
equal to tau lambda 2 plus rho minus gamma plus 2 rho. So, this is what you get on the right side. So, if you substitute then the left hand side becomes summation now gamma runs over lambda summation sigma in w summation tau in w sin of sigma tau then the partition sigma lambda 1 plus rho plus tau lambda 2 plus rho minus this gamma plus 2 rho comes times e power gamma comes. <coughs> so, this is the term that you are getting on the left hand side. Now, we need to look at what we get it on the right hand side. So, the right hand side is nothing but this summation n of lambda s lambda plus rho. Now, what we can do? We can again use the expression of s lambda plus rho and then rewrite what is there on the right hand side. So, let us try to do it slowly. So, the right hand side becomes the right hand side is nothing but summation n of lambda s lambda plus rho lambda runs over lambda plus. So, now uh, what we do? We just simply rewrite this using this s lambda plus rho which is given by summation sigma in w sin sigma e power sigma lambda plus rho. So, if you use this then this can be rewritten as follows summation lambda in lambda plus summation sigma in w then uh, sin of sigma n of lambda e power sigma lambda plus rho. So, this is what we get uh, if you just replace s lambda plus rho here. So, now uh, what we are going to do? We are going to change the variable. So, so we use this change of variable. So, write this sigma lambda plus rho as some gamma plus rho. So, then it is clear that lambda plus rho is nothing but sigma inverse gamma plus rho. So, using this if you rewrite then the right hand side actually becomes summation lambda in lambda plus summation sigma in w sin of sigma. So, again we have to replace lambda. So, lambda becomes sigma inverse gamma plus rho minus rho. So, we just use that n of sigma inverse gamma plus rho minus rho here then times e power gamma plus rho we get. So, now uh, we have to see where this gamma are running. Okay. Here the lambda is indeed running over capital lambda plus and since lambda plus rho will be just a dominant somewhere, but we are using this uh, while group action. So, we will be able to reach all elements in the weight lattice. So, that means this part indeed becomes gamma in gamma in capital lambda. Okay. So, this is what the right hand side looks like. But now, this can be again uh, massaged little bit because sin of sigma is same as sin of sigma inverse. So, using that you can rewrite this as summation gamma in capital lambda summation sigma in w sin sigma n of sigma gamma plus rho minus rho e power gamma plus rho. So, that is because sin of sigma is same as sin of sigma inverse. So, that tells you that uh, this is what the right hand side is. But now, notice that uh, whenever this n of sigma gamma plus rho minus rho is non-zero, that forces that the sigma gamma plus rho minus rho is indeed dominant weight. So, note that uh, this n of 
sigma gamma plus rho minus rho is non-zero that implies that the sigma gamma plus rho minus rho must be dominant. Let us go back to our uh, left hand side. So, we have substituted uh, mu plus tau of lambda plus lambda 2 plus rho to be gamma plus rho. So, that means here uh, this is what appears here. So, there is one rho is missing. So, we should write this rho here. So, now uh, we have this left hand side that has some formula. So, the coefficient of e power gamma plus rho is given very explicitly by this. But what we are interested in? We are interested in the coefficient of e power gamma when gamma e power gamma plus rho when gamma is dominant because that is how we can actually capture uh, the, 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 uh, the elements this uh, n of gamma. Okay. For example, if sigma is identity then we get here this n of gamma. So, for gamma dominant, so if n of sigma gamma plus rho minus rho is non-zero, then that implies sigma gamma plus rho minus rho is again dominant. But for gamma being dominant, then that would imply that gamma plus rho is indeed what is called a regular element. So, gamma plus rho of h i is going to be positive for all i from 1 to n. So, using this in this situation, I will leave it as exercise, you can prove that sigma must be identity. So, now for gamma in lambda plus, if you compare the coefficient on both sides. So, one side there is no contribution for gamma dominant you have only this uh, n of gamma as only coefficient on the right side. So, for gamma dominant n of gamma is the coefficient of e power gamma plus rho on the right hand side. Okay. So, that becomes clear with this observation. When gamma is dominant and n of sigma gamma plus rho minus rho is non-zero, so that would force that sigma is identity. So, that is the coefficient that you are getting on the right hand side which is n of gamma. So, that implies that uh, what is the corresponding coefficient on the left hand side. So, that is what, what you see in the Steinberg's formula. So, that is exactly given by summation sigma in w, summation tau in w, sin of sigma tau, p of the partition function applied on this sigma lambda 1 plus rho plus tau of lambda 2 plus rho minus gamma plus 2 rho. So, this proves the formula. So, the on the other hand, we get n of gamma to be equal to summation sigma tau varies over w sin of sigma tau the partition function correspond to sigma lambda 1 plus rho plus tau lambda 2 plus rho minus lambda plus 2 rho. So, this completes the proof of Steinberg's formula. So, uh, I will stop here and uh, we will continue with the wild dimension formula in the next class. Thank you.